the chat as we go ahead. Um, but I'll go ahead and get us started for today. So again, welcome everybody to our uh, TEA uh, 2023 mental, mental Health and Behavioral Health webinar series. And uh, on behalf of the agency and our whole team, uh, we're glad that you took the time out of your day to go ahead and join us. Uh, so today's webinar is the third in our series, uh, which is hosted by our mental health and wellness team here at the Texas Education Agency, which includes Tammy Genke, uh, our state coordinator for Project AWARE, uh, myself, Ashton Millett, uh, a, men a mental health and education specialist here at the agency, and of course, our fearless leader, uh, Julie Wayman, the director of mental and behavioral health. Um, our team works inside of the Supportive Schools Division uh, here at the, the Texas Education Agency, uh, and we focus mainly on mental health and safety initiatives. So we initiated this webinar series as a follow-up to our sixth annual Advancing Behavioral Health Collaboration Summit, or otherwise known as the ABC Summit uh, in 2022, just to take a deeper dive into many of the topics and resources that panelists shared at the summit, and also to promote uh, fentanyl awareness resources um, as well. So as we convene uh, each uh, second Wednesday of the month um, at 11 a.m., uh, we'll be, this is again the third in our series, and we'll be going all the way through to that second Wednesday in June. Um, so definitely stay tuned for that. And if you were not able to make any of the previous webinars, uh, the recordings are the recordings and supporting documents are uh, uh, found on our schoolmentalhealthtx.org website. And again, I know we're having a little bit of trouble with the chat, so I'll say that again. Uh, so schoolmentalhealthtx.org is where you can find uh, the recordings and supporting documents as well for not only this webinar session but previous ones as well. Uh, so today, our focus uh, will be learning more about the Texas School Mental Health Resource Database and its purpose to help schools, students, and families. And uh, we'll introduce our facilitator and our panelists shortly. Uh, and it seems as though we have a solid critical mass for folks getting onboarded. Uh, and uh, I'll go ahead and talk a little bit about some housekeeping um, for this webinar uh, session itself. So. Again, we are hosting today's session in the Zoom webinar format, which means all of our participants, um, the cameras are off, uh, as well as the, the, the audio function as well. But you can participate and ask questions through the Q&A function. And of course, uh, my, our team and our facilitators and panelists will, will do our best to to get to all of the questions that we can. So definitely become familiar uh, with that Q&A function. And again, we'll do a little bit of troubleshooting on the back end to uh, see if we can get the chat function uh, up and running throughout our session today. And uh, so moving on, uh, we do, because of our funders, uh, we do have uh, a pre-survey that we would like you all to go ahead and fill out for us. Um, this is going to be very helpful and impactful for us to understand, you know, what we're doing well with our webinar sessions and, and, and to learn more about you all as, as well. Uh, so you can either use the uh, code um, using your phones. And again, I know it's a little bit difficult uh, with the chat function not working right now. So if you have your phones on, you can actually take uh, you can use your photo uh, app to uh, use that QR code. And I know that the link is super long, um, but if you uh, have trouble with using your phone, you can also uh, type in the link in your URL bar as well. So we'll take a couple of minutes to go ahead and give you all the opportunity to do that. Um, when you get to the section that is, uh, what is the name of the training? You can go ahead and type in resource database which is shown on the uh, screen in the slide that we have up here. So again, we'll just take a couple of minutes to give you all the opportunity to complete that pre-survey. And for those of us who are uh, logging on a little bit late, um, I definitely want to apologize. We're having trouble with our chat function. So uh, to complete the survey, you can go ahead and, and use your phone to take a little snap of the QR code or uh, type in that, that URL code in the or the, the, the link into your URL bar.
Oh, nice. And it seems like my colleague Tammy is putting in the, the link in our Q&A uh, function. So appreciate you for that. So again, we'll give about one more minute to complete that pre-survey and we'll start getting into a little bit of our content for today. All right, so uh, Tammy has put the, the link into that Q&A function and we'll keep kind of like posting it up there because I know some of you may have had trouble with getting to it. Uh, so, you know, throughout, definitely feel free to uh, to, to complete that pre-survey as we kind of go along today if you didn't get a chance to do so now. But we'll go ahead and uh, get into a little bit of our content. Uh, and again, thank you for completing that survey and uh, feel free to uh, continue to, to, to do so if you didn't get a chance to, to do that uh, just now. So another thing too, so like uh, we mentioned before, this uh, webinar session today is the third in a series. So if you also haven't gotten an opportunity to, to register and sign up for the future webinars in our series, you can go ahead and do so by uh, checking out that, that QR code in the chat. Um, and we'll also make sure that it'll be up as well on our schoolmentalhealthtx.org website. So again, that's schoolmentalhealth tx.org, where you can go in and uh, register for uh, future sessions as well. So again, today's webinar is being recorded uh, for any of us that need to go back and check out some of this very interesting content. Um, or if you have friends that weren't able to make it today, you can definitely feel free to share uh, it with them through our uh, recordings that we will put up on the, the, the school mental health tx.org website. Uh, so as you know, it'll be a very much so a one-stop shop to register for uh, future sessions and also see recordings and uh, our supporting resources that we have. So again, uh, school mental health tx.org is where you can go to, to get that. Um, another little thing is we will be providing CPE credits for educators uh, for today's one hour webinar for people who attend the whole hour. So a CPE certificate will be sent tomorrow to the email address that you register with. And this will only be the way, this will be the only way that you can get your certificate. And we will not be providing CPEs uh, from TEA for the recordings itself. And then finally, you can subscribe to the TEA uh, Mental and Behavioral Health Newsletter uh, by using the link that we will be able to put inside of a follow-up email, uh, but definitely feel free to sign up for our newsletters as well. Um, so we'll go ahead and finish up our housekeeping. I will turn it over to my colleague, Tammy Genki, to introduce our session for today and get into this amazing content about our school mental health resource database. All right, welcome everybody. It's great to have somebody on online for this webinar event. I know this is a very busy time for everyone, so I appreciate um, you carving out some time to hear more about this amazing resource. So today uh, we're gonna learn more from Chelsea Sorensen. She's from Westat uh, with the Comprehensive Center 14. And then we also do have feature panelists um, that are gonna come on a little bit later. So she's gonna talk to you about our Texas School Mental Health Resource Database and, and its use. She'll um, go through the website and then things of that nature too for you. Um, so just from personal experience, this database is a great tool. And it's really useful to building uh, community partnerships, but also getting your um, organization out um, to everyone. So before taking this position with the Texas Education Agency, I was the community project manager for the Region 3 Education Service Center uh, AWARE grant. And so we use this database to invite different agencies um, to attend our resource roundtable. 
So I was able to get on the database. I was able to look it up for the county that we were doing this for and um, was able to find a lot of good resources. And so from that event, we were able to develop three partnerships with um, new agencies that were able to help our districts. So um, big fan of this resource database. So Chelsea has worked with um, the Texas Education Agency, the Education Service Center regions, and then other partners to facilitate the development and the launch of the Texas School Health Resource Database. Um, before I turn things over to Chelsea, I wanna remind everyone to use the Q&A function to ask the presenter or the panelist any questions. So we continue to monitor that, that Q&A and we'll, um, you know, give a chance at the end of the presentation for questions. Okay. Um, all right. So without further delay, let me turn it over to our presenter, Chelsea Sorensen. Thank you, Tammy. I'm going to share my screen here. We'll do a little bit of swap here. Okay. There we go. Can you all see my screen? Great. All right, as Tam Tammy said, I'm Chelsea Sorensen. I'm an education project specialist with the Region 14 Comprehensive Center out of Westat. And I support our school community health portfolio of work across Texas, Louisiana, and Arkansas. Our team at the Region 14 Comprehensive Center has been assisting TEA with the continuous improvement of the school mental health resources inventory that was identified in Senate Bill 11 of the 86th Texas Legislature in uh, 2019. You may have seen me at the ABC Summit providing an overview of the school mental health resources database that we launched last year to increase access to mental health resources across Texas. And today I'm going to do a deeper dive and demonstrate more of that website for you all. We also have a panel at the end uh, with Willa, Jenny, and Eric here to discuss use cases of the database and provide a bit more uh, insight from their perspectives. Uh, so thank you, Tammy, for kind of bookending. I think we're going to end the discussion very similarly to how you started with uh, your experience with the database. So here is our agenda for the day. Before I do the website demonstration, I'll walk through a few slides to give you a bit of background information on the database uh, to set the stage and give you a bit of insight into why it was developed uh, and how our implementation has progressed over the last couple of years. Uh, then we'll also wrap up with a few prompts for our panel and have kind of an open discussion. So as I mentioned, the uh, Senate Bill 11 from the 86th Texas Legislature Lature required TEA to develop a rubric for ESCs to use in identifying resources related to student mental health uh, and to identify resources available to schools in their regions. It requires the agency to share the revised rubric with the ESCs by December 1st in each odd numbered year and requires ESCs to submit a report on resources identified by March 1st in each even numbered year. So you can see by these requirements, there's sort of a natural um, updating process that happens every other year uh, that helps to keep the database up to date. Okay. Additional requirements from Senate Bill 11 stated that from the resource rubric, TEA shall develop a list of statewide resources available to school districts to address the mental health of students, including the following categories. Communities and schools, program services, training and technical assistance on practices that support the mental health of students, school-based programs that provide prevention or intervention services to students, community-based programs that provide school-based or school-connected prevention or intervention services to students, school-based mental, mental health providers, and public and private funding sources available to address the mental health of students. So this last category is slightly different since it refers to funding resources uh, rather than programs themselves. 
in preparation for the release of the December 1st, 2021 revised rubric, the Region 14 Comprehensive Center and TEA collected feedback from all of the ESCs on their use of the first rubric from 2019-2020 and found that the end product, which was at that time a static Excel document uh, that was sent to each ESC, was not largely used by the ESCs or anyone else for that matter. And part of this was due to staff turnover. So if the ESC person who was responsible for the rubric left, sometimes new staff were unaware that the Excel document existed. Uh, and part of this was also impacted by an end product that was in itself not very dynamic or easily shared, not very user-friendly to the people who may want to access the resources. And in our review of the resources identified in that first version, the 2019-2020 rubric, the Region 14 Comprehensive Center and TEA spent a lot of time cleaning the data that was collected in these Excel documents, which created additional opportunities for inaccuracies and errors to be made. Uh, some ESCs edited the format of the columns within the Excel document so that it was no longer uniform all the way across the state and others uploaded to Google Sheets for easier collaboration amongst their team. Uh, and that also impacted the formatting of the data when it was then downloaded again. There were also no built-in data validation measures to those rubrics, like requiring 10 digits for phone numbers or five digits for zip codes. Uh, so all of this left us with some questions about the quality of the data that was initially collected knowing that there was a wide variance in the processes for collection and entry. So based on the feedback collected by TEA and the Region 14 Comprehensive Center on that first version of the resource rubric and data collection process, our two major goals in continuous improvement for 2021-2022 were first to address the quality of data using data validation and standardization to decrease entry errors and the need for extensive data cleaning. And two, to address the usability of the end product by creating a direct data entry system and a dynamic searchable database that is easily accessible to all stakeholders. So with our redesign and updating of the inventory and creation of this database, we started with the data entry form that the ESCs were able to use. Uh, this was designed using the statute requirements outlined in Senate Bill 11 that we just reviewed. Uh, from that entry form, ESC staff were able to enter resources directly into the database. There was also built-in data validation into that entry form, so that increased the accuracy of the contact information for the resources that were entered. From there, we developed a public-facing website uh, that includes the searchable database, which is part of the statewide mental health ecosystem network. Additionally, the the benefit of that public website is that TEA and the ESCs are able to share that database with schools, districts, policymakers, families, et cetera. Additionally, uh, from that public website, uh, the data is able to be used to create reports. Uh, since the website is live, the information is always up to date and ESCs have the ability to submit resources add them, edit them whenever they uh, have the time, whenever they choose. TEA can run reports to include about resource availability in the statewide mental health plan. And the website also includes summary data visualizations, uh, which are available for download for easy analysis and comparison across different locations. So these are some of the features that were rolled out with that public database website in April 2022. We mentioned the searchable database, which is available statewide. The ability to share resources easily with students and families, unlike that first version in the Excel document. And then the ability to run reports 
uh, about the availability of resources across the state for the statewide mental health plan, and then the ability to include that uh, and share it with stakeholders. So this colorful slide, I have some screenshots taken directly from the database website, which is schoolmentalhealthtxdatabase.org. You'll notice that that sounds similar to the website that Ashton was promoting at the beginning. Uh, we have the same initial part of that URL, School Mental Health TX, but then we added database uh, to the end to take you directly to that database website. You can access the database website from that Texas School Mental Health website as well under resources. Uh, so you can kind of use that as your one-stop shop if you'd like to access it that way. We have the QR code for the mobile version available. If you'd like to look at that on your phone, feel free to do that. And then these are some examples of the data visualizations that are available on the website uh, that we will take a look at together here momentarily. You'll also notice some of the branding and colors align with that Texas School Mental Health website uh, to kind of have a cohesive experience and branding across the different resources available. Before I demonstrate the website for you, I did want to highlight one particular uh, graphic or data visualization for you all. This is the percent of resources identified in each region in Texas. Um, so I included this to maybe uh, spark some healthy competition amongst different regions within the state. Uh, we'll take a look at this on the live website because it's interactive. So when you hover over each of the pieces of the donut, it'll pop out and tell you exactly which region that is. Um, but that gives you a sense of sort of the general dis distribution based on what was entered into the database website. Okay, I'm going to pause very briefly as I switch displays and hop over to the database website. There we go. You all can see my screen. Great. So we'll walk through each of the different pages here on the database website. Uh, this is our homepage that we're on right now. You'll see there are three tabs across the top. We have home, about, and find resources. Our ESC point of contacts can use the login button here, uh, but the general public does not have any login credentials. Everything that we see today will be uh, available to anyone who goes to the website. On our homepage, we have a bit of information about Senate Bill 11 and how and why the database was created. Then you'll notice we have the general search bar here, uh, which you can enter in your ESC region, county, LEA, or keyword. Uh, we also have advanced filters, which we will show in just a moment uh, to uh, narrow our search results. Um, but if you want to start here, you can enter in a particular uh, type of resource you're looking for or a location, and it will take you to that list of resources. Then we have our grand total. Uh, the total number of resources that are entered into the database is over 1,300 right now, which is super impressive and speaks to the hard work that our ESCs have done in identifying available resources in their regions and also those that are available statewide. This is the graphic that I had pulled out uh, and, and mentioned shows how resources are distributed around the state. Uh, we can hover over each of the different regions and see the percentages that have been entered there. You'll also notice throughout the website, there are these icons for downloading. So this means you can download this particular graphic and share it that way if you would like. As we keep scrolling down, we have a little donut chart for percent by type of resource. These are those categories that were identified in Senate Bill 11 uh, that we walked through at the beginning of the presentation. We do separate out private funding opportunities and public funding opportunities, but those other categories are uh, the same that we just went over. So by far, it looks like the majority that have been entered are those community-based prevention and intervention services. 
We also break down the total by percent of resources based on intended impact. This is also outlined in statute by Senate Bill 11, these different categories. And the last feature of our homepage that I will demonstrate for you is this location comparison. So if you want an easy side-by-side -side, uh, look at resources in a particular location, whether it's region, county, or LEA, you can use this card feature uh, for comparison. So for example, if we select a region here, it will show us the total resources and give us the specific chart and bar chart here for the resources that have been entered in that region and some specific percentages down here. You can get more specific, as I mentioned, if you go to selecting a county. If we want to select one here, it will update and show you the total resources in that county. Or maybe you want to look at a particular LEA. It will update again and show you those particular graphs and charts. Once again, these can be printed and downloaded. So we have those icons here. If you'd like a PDF of this particular card, it's right there. Uh, but I mentioned that this is a side-by-side -side comparison. So if you want to add another location to compare it to, you'll click the blue plus icon on the right and then select another region to compare. Uh, so maybe we will select, oh, 10, we can do kind of a, a wide range here. So there you can see kind of side by side how things are distributed slightly differently. These ones are actually fairly similar, but you'll see sometimes that the charts look very different region by region or location by location. And you can do this comparison up to three times. So we'll click the blue plus one more time and maybe do one more comparison here. Or San Antonio region 20. Maybe we wanna look at a particular county. And there you can see the updated graphs again. Okay. That is our home page. I'm going to go back up to the top and go over to the next tab. Our about tab has a lot of information about uh, the legislative requirements. We also include information about uh, how the resources are updated, how often they're updated. We have those uh, intended impacts featured on these five cards that are on the about page. And then lastly, we have updates and contacts. So as you're going through the database, if you have questions, general inquiries, we have a contact email address here. You can send them, send any questions there. We link out to that schoolmentalhealthtx.org website. Like I said, that can be a really great one-stop shop. You can even access this resource database from there. And then we link to the school uh, statewide plan for student mental health and the progress reports here. Then we have an interactive map. Uh, so if you have questions about particular resources within your region, uh, the, the best way to get those questions answered or get a resource added or maybe edited is to contact your mental health or counseling representative within your ESC. And to do that and identify who that person is, you can go to this map of Texas, maybe select your region. We can pick on Jenny since I see her right at the top here. Uh, and it will take you to contact information for your ESC and who you can reach out to there with questions. We also have the general contact us button too, which takes you to that info at email address, the very first one that I mentioned here. Okay, and we will now go to our uh, find resources tab, which includes the filters that I mentioned, 
that break down your search results slightly more than that homepage general search bar does. When you click find resources, you'll see that the page automatically will load all 1300 resources in a list. Uh, this can be downloaded if you would like, uh, or you can copy the URL to this site. Um, or you may want to narrow your results based on what you're looking for. So maybe we're interested in a particular resource uh, within region four or a certain type of resource. We can specify again, region, county, or LEA. And then we have resource tags here. So this is like a keyword search uh, based on different needs, different types of resources. Uh, maybe we want to look at crisis response within region four, we'll click apply. The other filters that are available here are all of the different categories or uh, fields that were included in the data entry form that our uh, ESCs completed when they entered in the resources to the database. So with those filters in place, we're now at 39 resources uh, that you can scroll through. Each resource has a little card, uh, contact card, that will show you which LEAs it serves, its intended impact. When you click see details, it will pull up the contact information for that particular resource, as well as a phone number. If you would like to share this particular resource with someone, Again, you can copy the resource URL. So this particular card will pull up if you uh, copy this link using this button, or you can download this resource card and all of this information uh, can be sent to someone that way or printed. So here's what that list of search results looks, looks like. And again, clicking see details will give you more information about how to contact that resource and everything that's available. If you would like to start a new search, you just go to reset all down in the left corner and you can start over uh, with a particular county, LEA, et cetera. Uh, maybe we'll do one more search for a demonstration. Uh, something up at the top here. Oh, the Arlington, see what they've got. Uh, and then we have resource type. Again, those are those statute requirements uh, with different categories. We can see if they have those community-based prevention and intervention services and click apply. We have 33 resources that come up there with those cards that you can scroll through and share and contact as needed. Okay. So those are our three tabs. I'm going to stop sharing momentarily again as I swap displays one more time back to our presentation. Okay, we have a few testimonials and use cases before we transition to our panel. Um, we asked our ESC contacts uh, for some feedback and uh, examples of use cases a few weeks ago, and uh, this is what some of our responses uh, had to say. So someone said we have had districts asking for community resources, so we share this database link with the LEA. Someone else shared that we share this database with grant districts constantly, referring to the AWARE grants. And then uh, someone had a special education co-op director asking about mental health resources for a student in one of her counties, and they were able to show her how to use a search feature to find available local resources. So some examples of how it's being used more locally. Uh, I'm going to do FAQs, and then we will transition to our lovely panelists. Uh, so one question that I do get asked is, how do I get a resource added to the database? Uh, as we looked at that about page, uh, remember that if you select your region on the map of Texas, you'll be taken to your regional point of contact. 
And each ESC has a point of contact that has editing access to the database and can enter resources. Uh, they can also edit resources. So that's the next question that you'll see here. How does resource information get edited? Uh, you may notice uh, maybe a website link isn't working. That tends to happen as things are posted online. So reach out to your ESC and they can uh, help you out with who can get that contact information updated. And how many users does the database have? We are tracking traffic to the website. Uh, we have over 5,800 to date, and that is constantly going up. So we're uh, working on always communicating about the resource database uh, and increasing access. The more people who know about it, uh, I think the better. We're trying to spread the word as best we can. Uh, so we're very eager for opportunities like this one to continue to showcase it. Okay, we will now transition to our panel. Tammy, did you wanna jump in? Yeah, I was gonna ask, um, would you like me to introduce the panel for you? Yeah, I was gonna offer for them to introduce themselves, but if you would like to give introductions, that is perfectly fine with me, yeah. Okay, all right. Well, thank you, Chelsea, for that amazing overview of the Texas School Mental Health Resource um, Database. And so as, Again, I apologize for the chat feature um, malfunction, but we are putting the, the database links into the, uh, the, the Q&A um, part of things. So I wanted to do just a few introductions for the panelists. Um, the first is um, Jenny Yonick from, uh, she's an educational specialist and coordinator at ESC Region 12. And then we have Willa Rosen, who is the tax good behavior specialist at ESC 13. And then our final panelist is Eric Medcalf, uh, the student support manager at the Texas Education Agency. So we appreciate all of them being able to join us today for this wonderful panel that Chelsea has um, put together um, with that. So anyway, I'll pass it back to you, Chelsea. Great, thank you, Tammy. Uh, again, thank you to our panelists for being here. We so appreciate your insight. I wanted to start off our discussion with uh, just asking each of you how you interact with the database in your role. And if you can share your experience, uh, maybe from, from when we initially were implementing it up to today. Oh, Jenny, I think you're on mute. Did you wanna start us off? I certainly can. Um, this tool is absolutely amazing and um, the, con the concept for it is something that is very helpful because of the diverse needs that we have here in Texas. Here in Region 12, we started uh, a lot of our search for resources and how they apply to our region with asset mapping. And that was through local mental health authorities, that was through uh, HHSC, uh, child advocacy centers, and put those things together. But this is something on such a larger scale and um, seeing the development and getting to participate in that has been very helpful. We've also uh, really had a key role with our House Bill 19 uh, representative from our, our local mental health authority who uh, had a lot of great connections with mental health uh, providers in our communities and our counties. So uh, that background helped us really uh, have a lot of benefit from involvement in the creation of the database. And we have it, uh, should we share it out as often as possible? We have our schools that are uh, using it now and we're just very appreciative of the resource and the work. Thank you, Jenny. Willa, would you like to go next? Or sure. yeah, sure, we can go in order. Um, so we initially, when we were getting started, um, kind of looked at previous data that we had uh, brought in with all the different resources available in our region. We're one of the bigger regions, as you guys know, in the Austin area. So we have a lot of different things to look at. And then we convened a team um, of folks from both our community organizations as well as from our service center and school districts to kind of like just like brainstorm. We did like a huge brain dump of all the different resources that were available. And then we divvied them up in terms of contacting folks just to make sure those programs were still up and running, who they were currently serving, which region, which areas they were serving, et cetera. And then we had a lot of fun of, of doing all the data entry to get it up into the system. 
And then now, you know, our inner role is to basically update different community resources, you know, because these things are constantly changing, you know, they've got a new project that they're working, or they've changed their their catchment area of their serving. So we have to be able to do that. And then probably the biggest piece that we've done at this point is just trying to let people know that it's out there. So, you know, the, the communications piece and trying to drop it in, we're still, people are just learning about this. So this has been a big part of our work. Absolutely. And why we're so grateful to have you here to help spread the word. Uh, Eric, would you like to go next? Absolutely. Thank you. And um, so I've been involved actually with the, the creation of the inventory from the very beginning. And, and even with the initial rubric that was sent to the ESCs, um, recognizing it was in an Excel format and it was static. I mean, the, the dream all along has been for this to be a, a, a in, in a form that could be um, used um, by those in the field and, and that it, it, that it's meant to be something that can be searchable, that someone who has a need can, can reference this and, and find answers. And so, so um, just thrilled that, it, that we have been able to create the database itself, that it is dynamic, that it is able to be updated um, throughout the year. And we don't have to wait every two years to, to do a major update. Um, and then I do also want to just shout out Jenny and Willa and the other ESC staff who've done so much work in finding the resources in their particular regions and getting that information into the database so that others can access it. So I just want to shout you all out. Um, it's fantastic work. Absolutely. And I, I do think one of the great things about having a live database, a live website and uh, constant access is that hopefully the lift in time is not as heavy. Right. Uh, we don't have to wait every two years to update 1300 resources, but we might be able to update them as we know that they're needed. Uh, so that's definitely a, a benefit. Uh, next is just how has the database addressed a need? How do you see the need within your role and how has the database addressed it? I'll say that the need is extremely high right now. Um, I, and in talking to my colleagues across the state, I know we we see a, a, an enhanced level of need of, of resources for our schools, um, for our students and staff. Um, when we are rolling out and we're talking about the database and, and we're trying to do that as often as we can, sometimes it's it's coming at times when folks may not necessarily realize that it's there and then they'll call back and they'll say, I've got a situation where there's a family that's in need or there's one of my students that might need this, you know, schools will call and we'll, we'll point back to to say this is available for that search for something really specific, really near you um, so that connection can be made. Um, and then it, it's an aha moment all over again because we, we were able to say it's been here, but uh, but we'll we'll point you back, we'll walk you through uh, and be by you through that process. And then when using it, the districts will see that uh, there are contacts that are that are either close by or, or uh, resources they may not have known that are are location specific. So um, that that addressing of needs has really bridged a huge gap for many of our districts. And if I can jump in and tag on to that, like agree all with Jenny as usual. Um, but, you know, we've got a lot of new folks that are coming into into their roles within the district and they may not know how everything is. And as much as I'd like to be a walking Rolodex and try to connect people to resources, using the metaphor of teaching a man to fish versus handing them a fish. So I can say, here is this resource this is something that's out there versus hey here's this way to search for resources in your area to see what is going to fit the need that you're searching you know and, and again it's more empowering and then they'll use it more frequently again if it's at their fingertips they don't have to make a phone call wait for someone to call them back yeah. absolutely and, and i also would add uh, the development of the database itself is um really meant to be user friendly. And so that if if all you have is a, a keyword that you can um, to search from, if you don't know where a resource is in terms of a school district or a county, but if you just have a keyword, it's going to point you in the, in the direction. And so it, so a parent could use this, potentially a student could even use this, certainly school staff and ESC staff and provider staff could, could use this as a resource. So to me, that, that addresses a number of needs. It's, uh, you, you don't need to know the lingo. You don't need to know specific geographic areas. Um, you can just start with what you do know and you, you'll be pointed in the right direction. 
That is something that I like about the kind of keyword or tag uh, search feature within the uh, database, because if you don't even know which keyword you're exactly searching for, you might be able to scroll through the options and identify what you're looking for that way as well. Yeah. Uh, could any of you share a story about how someone has used the database, someone else other than yourself? <laughs> Uh, one of my schools called uh, Lyft to message that they had a parent who was um, looking for help for their child for, uh, and it was a very small and a rural school, and they they were trying to find out more about residential treatment centers. And in the area that they were, they did not have any clue really where to start or who was nearby and uh, left a message for me. And it was in the earlier part of the day, I was presenting that day later on in the afternoon where I was able to go back to call them back and to check to see if they'd found what they need and their need was met. They'd already accessed the database. They'd already been able to find options and uh, we're in the process of, of going down that path of connecting the family. So uh, what would have taken me or that person a long time to probably try to either think about or look through um, the district had already used this, the resource and, and was already on their way to getting help. So uh, it was great to know that uh, they were initially asking the question and then they remembered the database was there so they could go back and use it. I have uh, just two quick ones just to want to share. One is we had a situation with someone, a student that was identi identified as being McKinney Vento, and they were from far out of the area and they weren't familiar with the resources where the child was currently being housed, where they had previously been registered for the district and continued going to school there. So they were able to access that information that they weren't familiar about. But also we had another kind of strange request for, not strange, but um, someone that was wanting to bring therapy pets, um, therapy dogs to the campus. And again, it's a not a kind of a more common thing, but there was within the area a um, nonprofit organization where they can bring therapy animals to assist with a crisis debrief and they were able to do that. So again, these kind of services that, you know, you have your regular go-tos, your community mental health partners, your health centers, other types of resources that support you. But for some of those kind of more, a you know, atypical service interventions, you know, it, it's a, it was a way for them to get connected with that. Love that. Um, so I, I support the communities and schools affiliates in my work at TEA, and I've heard from multiple CIS staff who've said that as they've um, done their campus needs assessments and identified what resources were available, they've, they've referenced the database and actually found that there were providers serving in the county, but not the particular districts that they were in. And, and they took the opportunity to reach out to, to see if there um, if there was the opportunity for the, those providers to actually start serving these districts, and in fact there were, and so, so they've used it as, as a way to bring additional resources into, into districts that they were serving that weren't initially even included on the database itself. So um, it's 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 been a great way to see what's out there and, and what could be offered potentially to a district and make those connections and relationships. Yeah, that reminds me of the healthy competition that I mentioned uh, across the different ESCs. I think if, yeah, providers uh, know that they have the opportunity to be listed on the database, maybe they'll make connections with their ESC that way too, uh, to get, get on the website. Uh, how have you shared the database with others? As I mentioned, we're constantly working on communication uh, and using opportunities like these, uh, but I know uh, at the more local level, there may be ways that you're sharing this information. So we'd love to hear what you're doing. Um, one of the ways, well, to go, kind of tag what you're talking about too, as far as identifying resources, Chelsea, um, we access our Heart of Texas Counselor Association. You know, there are groups and collaborations that mental health providers have that come together. So when we can approach them to say, hey, check our work, make sure that we uh, haven't missed anybody or haven't missed anything. And a lot of times they have great uh, additional resources or new resources that uh, we're looking for. So we're doing that um, as we evolve and as we we check over the uh, the offerings. Um, we just try to share out as much as we can. If we're doing presentations in-house, we have a standard slide deck at the end for things to keep in mind and to know either what we're offering here at Region 12 or uh, resources to help folks out. Uh, some of us have um, different things in signature lines. Sometimes we rotate even our email signatures with different icons and resources in that so that you can even have access to that uh, even as we're just communicating with others. 
uh, we share with superintendents, with our principal groups, um, community partners. Uh, we're, we're always trying to make sure that they know what available resources that they have, and then they can share that on as well uh, in our social media and in, in lots of different ways. So uh, we're really always trying to keep that going and keep those conversations going um, to where all of our schools know that they have this. And just a second, what Jenny's saying is, yeah, the same, a uh, couple other things, you know, newsletters, letting people know, adding a slide to a presentation, informing them that, and then we were so happy that Chelsea actually came to our service center last week as part of our school safety conference to be able to share in person and everything, not even on Zoom. Yeah, that was a great opportunity and super happy to be able to do that with Region 13 last week. Uh, love to see people uh, accessing the database right in front of me and they had really great uh, questions and suggestions too. So it was a really good experience. Um, I've used the same strategies as Jenny and, and Willa. Um, I've also really tried to encourage my colleagues um, as they do presentations to to ensure that the, the database is referenced, that the link is there and to promote it. And so just kind of by extension, as they get in front of their various audiences, others are, are, are seeing it and getting the information. And then also just encouraging as people in the field use it, if, if there's if they see things that can be updated, if they if they see things that can that can uh, be added to improve, um, um, to share that information so that so that we maintain the momentum that that it that it doesn't become stale, that it, it is an accurate reflection of what's currently being available um, in school districts, and and everybody plays a role in that. Absolutely. Yeah, not just updating the list of resources, but we've talked about continuous improvement of the site itself. Uh, and some ideas uh, that we might be able to implement this next time around uh, since we're we're on a two year cycle, we're in an odd numbered year. So uh, that'll be coming up here before we know it. Uh, last, do you have any advice for others who are using the database, um, whether particular use cases or more generally uh, would love your thoughts? I have a couple of thoughts. Um, first of all, and I, I missed this and when talking about sharing the database and I would be remiss if I did not, highlight the network of regional counselor specialists, folks who are in ESCs who serve our school counselors. We have a group that meets regularly. They are some of the best and brightest rock stars I can think of. And uh, sharing resources on a statewide level like that at every region and with Willa's work and, and the other ESCs, um, cannot thank them enough because that's a big part of the day-to-day -day relationships that we have with our schools. Um, the first thing I think I would say about that, though, is it, with the advice is, Anyone can use this. Everyone can use this. It's not necessarily just a only in one place, one time thing. And, and what we've run into sometimes is, is the ideation that someone has to be in a struggling situation before they reach out for a resource. This is intended for everyone to help everyone. And uh, that that freedom of use anywhere, anytime means that we as people can find these resources, whether we are in a role as an educator or a counselor or a mom or a dad or an aunt or a neighbor. It has that education base, but it also has that community base of use. So um, sharing that because the schools are such important parts of our communities means that it can start there, but it's not just for that. The same wonderful mental health resources on here are for many, many different people uh, in our state. So that's probably the first thing. And um, and just being being willing to share with someone else and say, if you are in a place and uh, you think you don't know someone near you or, or a therapist or an agency near you, this database very well might have that answer for you. So that's how I would probably see it and like to see it sharing more. And agree with that 100%. One other thing just to add to that as well is to make this a two way street is, you know, as you guys are using a database, you know, there may be a new resources out there that we haven't known. One of the current resources needs to be updated. So please send us a love note or reach out to say, hey, you may you, you left this part out, or you, you know, you may want to add this organization, or this, pro this, this group has a new program you know, to be able to let us know, because we're trying to update it as we become aware of it. And if you, you know, with, with there's 370 of you guys on the call today, if you guys can, can participate as well, it's going to make it more robust for the whole state. Well, 
Jenny and Willow took exactly what I was going to say. I mean, <laughs> promote it and share it. And then also, I mean, any anytime we, you create a, a resource like this, um, things change immediately. And so for it to continue to be useful, we need to know um, that things need to be updated, that things need to be added or removed. And so please do share that information with your ESC contact or the, the, the info um, email on the, on the website, on the database itself. And uh, we can make those updates. Absolutely. I think the more people use it, likely the more accurate the information will be because they're encountering those things that may need to be added or updated uh, as time goes on. And uh, like I said, too, that uh, decreases the, the heavy lift of updating all of those resources every two years, um, but also increases access and usability of the, the database, which is what we're aiming for, for, for folks who need those resources. Um, so yes, thank you so much to our panelists. We do have just a few minutes uh, for th closing thoughts and questions. Uh, hope that this uh, is useful for all of you that are on the call today and hope that it opens some communication uh, to different community partners within your region as well as your ESC points of contact uh, to help facilitate that. I don't know if we have anything in Q&A. Uh, Julie, have you seen anything come in that we need to answer? Yeah. There was just one question. I know we only have about three minutes left, but it had to do with um, printing the information that um, when you export it, it brings it to an Excel document versus they mm -hmm. were asking, you know, basically want to a printout of what they see on the screen. So I didn't know if you had that answer off the top of your head or if they need to, we need to get back to them. You may need to export the Excel into Word or PDF is my advice. Uh, yeah, off the top of my head, I don't know directly on the database. I think I was under the impression it automatically did PDF, PDF yeah. not Excel, uh, but that may be like a two-step process as you work with that Excel document that it gives you. All right, thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I think there were a couple other questions that we're addressing um, now. So with that, I think we'll turn it over to Ashton to close us out and give us the post-training survey link and all of that. Thank, Thank you all for the excellent information. Thank you for that, uh, Tammy. And, and uh, I definitely want to send a, a note of gratitude to all of our, uh, our facilitator, Chelsea, and our panelists today. Um, and, and definitely much love and gratitude to the ESC points of contact and like the staff out there that are like really putting in uh, the work to, to upload all of these uh, resources to the database. So uh, Tammy, if you could put up the um, the slide to the post survey, that would be uh, awesome. Uh, we also put the link to our post survey inside of that Q&A. Uh, I'll go ahead and, and type another answer in again to that, to that survey. Uh, but please uh, go ahead and fill that out for us as uh, we kind of close out for today. Um, and of course, we know that there's a lot of diverse needs across the state of Texas. So again, um, thank you for like coming in to all of our participants today and joining us for today. Uh, and hopefully, you know, the knowledge that you got about the resource database gives you a little bit of a foundation to go back uh, and, and share with others and connect, you know, students, families, campus leaders, districts uh, to the resources in that database as well. Um, so definitely please go ahead and fill out our post survey and uh, while you all are doing that I know we're at time uh, but I also want to uh, highlight our school mental health tx.org website again so all of the uh, recordings for our previous webinar sessions as well as the webinar session for today uh, will be on school mental health tx Dot org. You can go there to see the, the links from today, um, as well as the recording. And I also want to highlight uh, that, you know, TEA has done, um, has, has been compiling resources to uplift uh, you know, fentanyl awareness and prevention. And on our school mental health tx.org website, we have a link that will be able to give you all more resources about fentanyl awareness prevention, as well as a uh, communications toolkit um, for you all to, to be able to use uh, to, to promote awareness 
uh, and prevention around, around fentanyl use. So uh, definitely, again, thank you all for that. Please visit schoolmentalhealthtx.org to view the recordings as well as uh, some other resources around fentanyl awareness prevention. Uh, and again, thank you all. You all are free to go. We will, we will leave the uh, link, or we will leave the, the session open for a little bit longer uh, in case you all need the link for uh, completing the, the survey. So again, thank you all. Thank you, Ashton. Thank you, Chelsea team, everybody. Amazing panel. As you leave this open, um, I think we're copying the training link into the Q&A so everybody can grab it easier. I see 